Welcome to part 3 of this video series. Today we're going to take a more detailed look into small boat marine heads or toilets. But first I need to discuss terminology. There are a lot of different terms to describe a marine toilet. The most common term is the word head. This term can either describe the toilet itself or the room that it contains it. So for the purpose of today's video, we're going to stick with that. But one other term I should mention is WC. This is a term you'll see on a lot of boat plants. It stands for water closet, which is basically just another term for it. Okay, so the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do you want an enclosed head or not? Most people jump at an enclosed head and it makes sense. Who wants people around when you're doing your business? But a classic naval architect once said, when designing small boats, why give up 30% of your living space for something you use less than 10% of the time? There are other options to reduce space, like cross cabin heads, where the only part enclosed is the toilet until you close the doors across the cabin and then you have a fully enclosed head. There is the option of just wrapping the area in a curtain. This is obviously a less desirable. And then there's the completely non-enclosed head and this is the least desirable of all options. However, having said that, my current tiny little 18 foot has a head that slides out to the cabin to be used. My wife then just goes out into the cockpit while I'm using it and depending on what I'm doing exactly, I'll turn on some music. As far as completely open heads go, one thing that is common in many small boat designs is placing it under a removable section of the V-berth. Unless you're single and plan to stay this way, avoid this if you can. The problem with this is if you or your partner have to use the head in the middle of the night or one sleeping, you have to wake them, ask them to get out of bed to use it. This can be extremely upsetting. Next question for those who decide to have a fully enclosed head is whether it's going to be a wet or dry head. Wet is where the whole enclosure becomes a shower and dry is when there's a separate shower. Now, I'll be honest, the chances of fitting a dry head with a separate shower in a boat that's under 32 feet is not very likely. Although officially you could call it a dry head if you choose to normally shower in the cockpit or some other option. Now, as far as showers, the most common shower setup that's within an enclosed head are the wet type. And this is simply a sealed room, usually with fiberglass, but I've seen lots of other waterproof materials used. Then under the floor there's a special box that the water flows into and within that there's a pump that takes the water either overboard into a large gray water tank or a water recycling system. And as for the shower head, most of the type that the spigot of the sink faucet comes off and attaches higher up in the wall. I'll be talking more about the specific intricacies of the plumbing and the gray water recycling system in another future video. One of the issues sometimes found is there's no place to put your towels or toilet papers or things you don't want to get wet within the wet shower. However, on some, but not all production boats, they have a small storage area behind a sealed door for such items. And you can buy waterproof toilet paper holders aftermarket. You could also keep such things in containers like plastic storage boxes, or just keep them outside the head and open the door to reach for them afterwards, although you might be dripping on the floor. Now, if you don't have an enclosed head, you still have options other than jumping in the water and swimming. If your cockpit is a self-draining type, you can choose to set up a shower out there. If your cockpit already has some form of enclosure with curtains, then you're set. If not, there's lots of other ways to make a simple enclosure. Some you can buy already made. Then as for the shower itself, there's many portable shower options. In fact, there's way too many for me to describe them all. So I'll just talk about the simplest and most common. There's the gravity-fed shower, which can be a black bag heated by the sun. This is known as a solar shower. A two liter bottle of water just poured over your head. However, if you want a little nicer, you can get a collapsible pail and a battery powered shower. Just heat the water on the stove, if you don't have a hot water system that is. Fill the pail, put the submersible pump in it, and you're ready to shower. If you don't have a self bailing cockpit or would rather shower inside the cabin, you can still set up a round shower curtain and create something to catch the water in the bottom. One setup I saw was this couple had turned a roll of fairly thick plastic into a tub using just good duct tape. And then they just unrolled it, set it up on the floor, and after they used it, they used the portable bilge pump and a sponge to dry and empty it. Next question. If you do go with a fully enclosed head, do you want the sink in there like you find in a house? A lot of people say it's an absolute. There's no way I'm waiting to use the kitchen sink to wash my hands. And if that's what you choose, that's fine. But remember, a sink normally means you need a little bit more space within that tiny little room that you only use for 10% of the day. And the reason I say normally is although they're rare on mass-produced boats, you can find folding sinks or sinks that slide out over top of the head. These definitely cost a bit more, but they're be worth it. Three more small points you have to consider when deciding on a sink. 
is the fact they do add a little bit more weight, they do cost a bit more, and they do slightly add to, to the amount of maintenance you need to do. But these reasons are pretty minor. Now, if you do want to enclose head, there's no reason why it has to be a waste of space the other 90% of the time when you're not using it. Instead, it could be used for storage. One method is to put items in plastic totes and move them in and out when you need to use it. But something I saw that I really liked was a clothes rod that swung completely outside of the head when, you, when it's in use. That way you have a nice clothes closet to hang up your clothes. Plus if it's a wet style head, you can hang wet clothes and they can just drip onto the floor and into the drain. Now for the big controversial topic, the head itself. There's lots of different types and just as many opinions on which to use. So we will start with what most people think is the simplest and cheapest. Other than the cedar bucket that is. And that's the chemical toilet or porta potty. These are my personal least favorite and a lot of places have put restrictions against them. Some don't allow them at all and some require them to be permanently mounted with a system to allow them to be emptied using a marina pump out. If you're in a place that allows them, then you still have the issue of finding a way to empty them. Most marinas will not allow you to empty them into their system. They're gross to empty and to me the chemical they use to cover the smell is as bad as the smell itself. The next type I want to discuss is the built-in toilet you would find on bigger boats. These have a head with a pump that's either manual or electric that empties into a large black water tank or through an electric sanitation device. I won't discuss directly pumping overboard because it's illegal anywhere except for far offshore and most boats in the size range simply don't travel far enough offshore. Now, as for black water tanks, the problem with them is the amount of space they take that could be used for long-term storage. The weight they add while underway, especially when they're full, maintenance and the cost and headache of getting them pumped out. Electric sanitation devices are great. They allow you to discharge your waste overboard after it has been made environmentally safe. Except they are expensive, they use electricity, and if someone sees your discharge, they won't know if it's treated or not, and they can harass you. I will talk about tanks, seacocks, macerator pumps in my future video on plumbing. The last type I'm going to discuss today is the composting toilet. Now in the past these have gotten a bad rap, but that's because they used to just be pails with a toilet seat on it that you added sawdust to. Today they've gotten a lot better, although a lot of people still like the basic bucket type. The most simple concept of the composting toilet is that when solids are moist, they smell. And if you use something like peat moss or sawdust to draw the moisture out, they won't smell anymore. And this is true. However, the problem with just a pail is that your urine is wet and it gets into the bucket with the solids. Plus, there's no way to mix the sawdust or peat moss with your solids other than by using some sort of hand tool. Modern composting toilets have special diverters which separate the urine from the solids and have some sort of crank to mix the solids. So there's absolutely no smell. Oh, and for the record, sphagnum peat moss is the absolute best to use, and it's not very expensive. Although, I suppose not as cheap as sawdust, which a lot of people can get for free. What you're left with resembles very dark dirt. It's completely environmentally safe. The urine is collected in a separate jug, quite often with a check valve to hold down any smells. The only downside of these is they can be quite tall in a small boat, but not always, and they can be quite expensive, but again, not always. Plus, you need a place within reach of the head to store peat moss or sawdust. These are without a doubt my favorite type. They're very reliable, they never smell, never need pump outs and require very little maintenance. Whichever head you choose is up to you. They all work very well in a small boat. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos of this series and I'll include a link below in the description to the entire playlist. Thank you for watching and please again don't forget to subscribe.